Hello everyone, it's Karma, and we're back with a V12 Tactics and Strategy Breakdown. We haven't done one of these videos in a while, but I had a really cool engagement here on Kohat, and so we're just going to break it down, tell you what I'm thinking, what I could have done better, what you guys should be doing, and things to look for. So right now, the situation is we are the US team playing against Russia on Kohat RAAS. We're at the last flag. We're attacking it north to south. We'd previously uh, tried to attack it east to west, but to no avail. And so now we're shaking things up. We're trying to hit it north to south. I've got squad four and five on the south side of the cap, trying to draw fire with their infantry as well as a Bradley. They're also taking out enemy armor coming from the enemy main. So that's pretty much the general scenario going on. And as I pull up the map, you'll see what's going on and I'll repaint that picture for you. But right now you can see I'm trying to put down a rally. And the reason for this is I want that rally as close to the cap as possible to ensure that my guys can get back in the fight faster because the closer the rally, the easier it is to continue the engagement. If my rally is a minute away by foot, it's going to reset the entire engagement and we have to restart the assault all the way over again. So I want my um, rally point for an assault pretty much within one sprint distance. That's my kind of rule uh, of thumb is like my rally when I'm attacking an objective needs to to number one, be safe in a safe location that isn't going to get overrun. But number two, needs to be about or less than a full sprint away. Because that allows my reinforcing troops who are coming off that rally to get back into the fight and continue that fight in the cap. If it's further than one sprint away, that engagement's going to get entirely reset upon respawn. And you're going to have to start the engagement all over again at most likely a further distance. So that's pretty much what we're going uh, to do right now. And as we pull up that map, like I said uh, before, we're going to talk about the situation at uh, large. I think Hello, you can rearm at the fucking Bradley, but... Yeah, we could have... All right, so as we pull up the map here, let me go through this because it's a lot to take in. Uh, so first off, as you can see, we're at the last cap here in the south, and we're trying to take it. I've got squad four with his infantry over here, squad five with his infantry and Bradley over here. The Russian main with armor reinforcements is coming from the south, uh, and my squad's the only squad attacking from the north. Uh, a couple other things to note is that there's an enemy firebase on the high ground overlooking Sarazai, and we have open ground here between us and the cap. The cap, of course, is right here if you did not spot it yet. And then finally, we do have a firebase at Suni Kel with a tow launcher. Now, if I was going to go back and redo this again, I would ask them to put up mortars and mortar support so that we could get uh, HE on this firebase and smoke in between me and the cap to help us push the cap. But uh, I thought that we had the sufficient amount of assets to push this without the mortars. Uh, but going back, if I want to absolutely make sure that we get this cap, I would have asked, asked for uh, mortar support from Suni Kel. So that's the situation right now, and as you can see, my previous rally a little bit further away, maybe about 300 meters. I want to try to get it, like I said before, within one sprint meter distance, because that allows my guys to get in fast and continue the engagement. Whereas if they respawn here, we're pretty much going to have to start the engagement all over again. So that's what we're doing right now, and as I'm looking at this map, I'm making sure all the pieces are in place, right? We got four and five on the south. I've got my squad roughly together. The next thing I'm looking for is a good way to get in on the cap because I don't want to cross open ground because I've got four MGs here looking at me. And this is a bug from B12. This shouldn't be here on launch. Be able to see enemy uh, emplacements. But yeah, you can see there's four MGs looking north. So I need to make sure that my approach north to south onto Sarazai is in cover or it's at least concealed. So that's what I'm looking at for terrain features on the map. All right, my, the key here is five and four are drawing fire in the south, which means we got to get in close on top of them before we engage, okay? So, like I said, as a squad leader, it's incredibly important to relay the thought process in your mind to your guys. Because the more information that they have, the easier it is for them to paint that picture and act accordingly, act accordingly in relationship to your plan. So if they don't know what you're thinking, they're going to go and do things that you don't want them to do. And it's going to end up being a lot more difficult and a lot more complicated to execute certain tactics or strategies. Because they're going to be looking south, hopefully. Four or five, this is two. Are you engaging yet? Over. So right there, I make sure that I get all the information out. And then finally, I reach out on command comms and make sure that four and five are prepped. They're ready to go. Communication is like so much of squad. It's like 70% of squad at least. Uh, not If you don't talk, you don't communicate, you're going to have a lot of issues because you got to work with your squad. You got to work with your squad mates. You got to work with enemy, uh, or not enemy, but other squad leaders. It's it's a lot to work. Fire missions, uh, armor support. You got to learn how to communicate effectively and efficiently because that is a big part of squad. 
Engaging contacts on Bob position. I gotta beat you up with my six. I'm waiting for. All right. Squad one city is gonna be engaged. Uh, At least one squad. behind me. Don't peek. Don't peek with me. I gotta find proper ways on the cap. All right, so I did two things there, both communication-wise. Number one, I relayed what I heard over command comms back to my guys. Once again, that's very important as a squad leader. You need to make sure that your guys are in the game and they know what is going on as far as what the other squads are doing because as mo the more information your guys can get, the easier they can paint that picture and the easier they can act accordingly, right? Because if they don't know what's going on and you're just telling them to do stuff without context, it gets really confusing really fast. So make sure that you give as much information as possible you make sure that everyone gets that information. The second thing I told them to do was hold at the crest and let me peek and look over. I am doing this for two reasons. Number one, I'm peeking the crest to make sure I can find a good avenue of approach, whether it's in cover or in concealment. The second thing I'm doing is making sure it's only me cresting this uh, hill because I don't want like 10 heads, or excuse me, nine heads popping over this crest and the Russians see all of us popping over the crest. The fewer people that get the recon on, the less chance we have of getting spotted, right? So I'm going up to confirm and look... Uh, and see what I'm looking for. And there are three things what I'm looking for. Number one is enemy positions. Number two is where the actual cap is located. And number three is, is there any cover or concealment on the cap? Right, those are the three things we're looking for as we crest this hill. I'm going up alone because I don't want the entire squad to pop up over the ridge and to be a huge target for enemy infantry. So that's what we're, do what we're gonna do, uh, do right now. Roger. Copy. And yeah, they're all looking south. So we crested the hill and there's three things that we got, right? We see enemy MG1, enemy MG2. We've got a few enemy infantrymen up here on the ridge as well. The enemy, uh, the cap point is roughly down here. You can see the tops of the buildings if you're looking carefully. And the next thing I'm noting is that it's incredibly flat up here. There's That's trees and there's concealment, but it's, it's incredibly flat, right? This, this right here, this is, this is a dead man's land, right? With MGs with optics looking over this and overwatching this position, to push my squad across this open, even with these sparse trees, it would be suicide, right? And you can kind of see the tops of the buildings right here. So first thing in my mind is I'm going to get off the crest. I'm going to relay what I saw, and we're going to look for another avenue of approach. So fucking, we can't go this way. It's too flat. Yep. We're going to keep rotating. So I tell them we can't go this way. It's too flat. We're going to keep rotating, right? So they're in the game, right? I'm not just walking down the hill from a squad leader and moving on. I'm letting them know exactly what I'm thinking and what I'm doing so they can be on the same page. Stay below the crest. Once again, making sure that they stay below the crest. Now, right here, a very important thing happens. Sonny, with his great eyes, manages to find an avenue of approach by looking at the map. Now, I missed this as a squad leader, and looking back, I should have uh, inspected the map more carefully, but Sonny does a really good job of finding an Wait avenue of approach. We can get in at a... Uh... So as you can see right here, if you look closely at the map, there's a little dry run on the north-northwest side of Sarazai. And Sunny spots this out to us, and we continue moving to that position. Meanwhile, I'm looking at the map in squad 5 and 4 making good progress on the south. So I know that the Russians have a lot of pressure on their south right now. There. Did you just ping that? Can you see that? They were enemy lodges yeah, like close to friendly Wait. main south. Yeah, Mark. that right there. <laughs> Possible wow. So cool. Is that the right click? Uh, on the map? On the map, I just like. So people always ask me, why do you pull the map up so much? It's because as a squad leader, you need to be aware of how close these guys are going, right? I get that comment a lot in my videos is, Karma, why do you pull up the map so much? It's because as a squad leader, half of your job is literally communication, the other half of your job is making the right decisions. Uh, based on the map, right? Where enemy players are, where your guys are, where the cap is. Like, honestly, as a squad leader, you don't have to shoot a single bullet. Sure, it helps a bunch if you are a ace uh, shot and you can put down uh, a whole bunch of enemy players and you're good on the assets and everything like that. But honestly, I will take a squad leader that's great at communicating and using the map over a top fragger any day of the week. Like, if you can do both, that's awesome. But I would rather take someone that knows how to lead and command a squad and read the map as a squad leader over a top shooter any day of the week. Are you a fire team? You're not even yeah, a fire team leader. Yeah, everyone deploy markers now, No, you're not even a fire team leader. Oh god, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> They're only temporary. <laughs> Do we have a fire set up? <laughs> no, I don't. Here, let me set fire teams up. Are three of you, like, uh, the mini-map? 
So right here, what I'm doing is I'm setting my fire teams to assault the cap. And it's pretty important to have fire teams when you're on the assault, mainly because you want to have an assaulting element and a covering element. And there's two ways that I set my fire teams. Um, if I'm just going around the map or I want to have a balanced way of dealing with enemy contact and have a lot of flexibility, what I'll do with my fire teams is I'll split them into two groups and have equal assets in each group, which means each uh, fire team will have an AR, a uh, rifleman, a medic, and a lat. And that will be alpha fire team and bravo fire team. For assaulting, what I'll do is a little bit different, is I'll put all my riflemen in one fire team. In this case, for this scenario, it's going to be Bravo. Usually, they would be Alpha, but uh, I split my rif uh, my assault teams like this. So, my assault team is all riflemen, and my covering and support team is my lats, my medic, my ARs. All that stuff is in uh, the other fire team. Now, normally, for consistency's sake, I'll say, like, Alpha is assault, so that's where all my fire team, uh, where all my riflemen will go to, and Bravo is bipods, which means... Um, support but right here because we're working with the new uh, fire team layout I kind of get that backwards and I send my assault team into Bravo and keep my support team in alpha so it's a little bit confusing but that's roughly how I split my two fire teams up either assault and cover or equally balanced with assets so right here even um, kids. Hashi Sager. you'll see me put all my riflemen all my standard riflemen into uh, Bravo now, it's kind of important to pick a good, competent fire team leader because the fire team leaders are the ones that keep your guys on task. You'll give the original or, or the, uh, the overarching decision and strategy, but it's your fire team leaders that keep your guys on task and keep them pushing through and continuing um, on the same page. Because if you don't have a solid fire team leader to keep the guys in check, what will usually happen is you'll give an order or you'll give a command, and what will happen is they'll stay on it for the first couple of like seconds but then they'll get distracted or they'll get uh overwhelmed or, or they'll forget what they're doing so the fire team leaders are there to keep them in line keep them in check and keep them that momentum going that's in line with the squad leader's decision right so fire team leaders you got to rely on heavily you got to make sure that they're good leaders and making sure that they are in control of the uh the fire teams that they're in charge of because it's very important if you have that missing link between the squad leader and the uh infantrymen and you don't have that fire team connection it's really hard to keep on top of these guys and make the higher uh decisions at the same time because it's a lot of things you got to control so looking here i'm looking at sunny and i noticed that sunny i played with sunny a whole bunch i trust sunny sunny's going to be leaving leading bravo I look at my alpha fire team and um i decide that you know i'm going to lead alpha i'm going to stay behind and cover uh because if we have five guns covering and four guns assaulting, that's going to be more fire superiority and more uh, rounds we can put down range to cover my attacking um, squad or my attacking fire team, right? Five guns over four. You always want to have the covering element be a little bit bigger than your assaulting element because you want that fire superiority. You want that uh, ability to cover them as they move, and you can't do that with uh, fewer guns. You can do it better with more guns. So the more guns you have, the higher chance that the assaulting team can make it to target. Maybe not. All right, Sonny, you're leaving. You're leading, uh, Bravo. Yep. Alpha, I'll lead. I'm out. Yeah, you're out. Enemy fob is on the south side of Sarah Sai Highway. Alright, bro, let's just fall behind Alpha and then we'll kind of. So, right here, we find that dry run. You can see I'm looking over to my left and we got rock cover over here, rock cover on the right, and we got tree uh, concealment within the ditch itself. Split off and right, follow me. say something. Now, you can see I'm keep trying for that rally because i want to get that rally as close as possible and this is pretty much the last jump off point for the rally because past this point it's gonna be open ground and then the cap so this is the closest i can get the rally without it being you know on the cap and risk it getting overrun Conserve your ammo only do well play shots we're still weapons tight all right so you can see the cap is right here within 50 meters we got an enemy lodgy and i remember that the enemy firebase is behind this rock over here so this is the last spot this is probably where i'm going to set up my support team, right? My covering team. And then uh, Bravo with their rifleman is going to assault the objective and hit the compound through the trees. So a couple things is making sure that my guys know the ROE. I told them weapons tight. The reason why is because if I start having guys pop off shots from this location, Russia looks in this uh, direction and now my assault team is going to get caught in the open as they push across. What I want is my... Uh, Bravo assault team to push across fast. If they hit engagement, then Alpha can react with supporting fire. But if we engage before that uh, assaulting team pushes off, then they have to cross open ground in enemy fire. I want my assault team to get across open ground as far as they can before they get engaged. We can need some help at city. All right, Alpha on me. We're gonna cover Bravo. Bravo, get into the compound southeast. Go. So there's 
a mistake I made here, but I essentially tell the squad what they what I want to do. This is the last spot we're at. Alpha is going to cover from here because this is as far as we can get and as close as we get to the compounds without getting into the open. So I tell Alpha, we're setting here, we're covering Bravo. Bravo is going to loop behind me on my left into the compound. Now, the one mistake I did, and if I could go back and do this differently, I would do it differently, is I did not check the MG bunkers or the enemy position before I sent Bravo out in the open. This is a big oopsie, right? Um, this is a big mistake because I did not check how many guns were looking this direction. I went off the previous previous information from like five minutes ago if uh, when they're all looking south, right? So I, I'm using that information and I'm assuming that they're still looking south, which is bad. I shouldn't have done that. I should have checked with my eyes one last second. It would have taken like two seconds before sending Bravo into the open. And this is a very costly decision, right? So I tell Bravo to get in the open, they start moving in the open, which means I need to get eyes on enemy positions, right? So I start doing that. I'm doing that. Bravo move. And unfortunately, the first thing I scope in on is a Russian soldier in the MG pit. So luckily, we have that support element set up, so we're able to engage this thing ASAP. But it would have been nice to have guns on it ready to go before my guys even push into the open. Uh, but this is why it's so important to have a covering element and an assaulting element and not to push the entire squad into the open. Because if you're all moving in the open, you're all caught with your pants down. Whereas right now we have a supporting covering element that's ready to engage anything that hits Bravo. So Bravo starts taking a lot of fire, but because I and my uh, fire team are in place, we're able to put shots on this MG gunner as fast as possible. MG bunker's hot. Get him out of the MG bunker. Oh, oh shit. Man. Out. Apple, keep going. Bravo, keep on going. Bravo, keep on going. Bravo, keep going. So you can hear, you can hear. Um, I actually misspoke here and said Alpha, keep going. That's that's another bad, um, bad habit because I'm used to Alpha being my assault team, but Sunny's on top of it. Sunny is to be in my great uh, fire team later that he needs to be pushing these guys uh, into the buildings, right? Because what'll happen here is if you don't have someone telling them to keep moving, is uh natural player instinct is as soon as they hit contact in the open your assault team hits contact in the open they'll freeze they'll stop and they'll return fire which is incorrect unless you absolutely need to kill this guy you should continue moving to target and make sure that your covering team is handling it you as the assault team your objective is to get to that building or to get to that target as fast as possible not to stop in the open and return fire unless the guy is right in front of you and blocking the doorway you keep pushing a target and rely on your uh, covering team because if you get stuck out there you're stuck you're staying still you're still target you're dead right especially because you're crossing open as the assault team so let the bravo support team or the uh, covering team element handle it Enemy app and, uh... so like i said sunny great job for keeping them on uh keeping the gas on the pedal keeping them pushing across the open and into the compounds you gotta make sure that you keep tight control of you guys because once again these aren't soldiers that we're playing with right these are average gamers right they get distracted they forget things they they freeze up they have their own you know desires and and, and will to do random things so it's important as your fire team leader and your squad leader keep tight control over you guys and that's why i repeat myself so much over the squad comps is because these guys aren't trained to listen to orders right it's easy as a person watching the video to hear what i'm saying and understand what i'm saying but when you're in game you're playing you're shooting at targets you're talking to other guys you're trying not to get killed you got a hundred other things in your mind my voice will slip right past you which is why i repeat it you need to be annoying sometimes over command comps or squad comps to make sure you get heard because these aren't trained soldiers who are ready to listen for commands these are just average people playing a video game so it's making sure that you get your shit across, that your team and your squad gets things done. Radio are accurately marked southwest of Sarasai Highlands. Go to the compound, Bravo. Bravo, go to the Bravo. 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 keep going, one, Alpha cover. One. So Sunny and I just making sure that we keep on these guys, making sure they don't get distracted. They're not uh, getting bogged down. They're not getting stuck, right? And making sure you keep the momentum up. That's so important because the momentum is easily lost when players start getting distracted or, uh, you know, breaking off from what they're supposed to do. I mean, Sunny, How many I'm of you guys make it in? So... I'm looking right here, we're scanning, it looks clear. I now I'm getting the important information of how many of my guys actually made it in, right? Because the thing is like, if we got absolutely shredded, I need to rethink this. If we got in and cleared the compound, that's a whole different scenario. So I'm asking what's going on in the compound. I need to know so I can react accordingly. And the information I get back is that two are alive, but they cleared the compound. So I know that the cap is now clear. I know that the South Hill is now clear, or relatively clear. And I know that we have only two guys in on cap. So my next decision is to get more bodies in the cap. So I start sending my fire team alpha across in, uh, into the compound. Because what I need to do now is stronghold that point. They need to hold tight angles and they need to make sure that they're on the cap holding the cap. Because 
They can't get distracted at this point. We only have two guys on the cap. We need to lock down the actual compound. So that's why I make sure that they do, and I start sending Alpha across as I cover, right? You always want to have someone covering. Because I have the ACOG, I chose to cover Alpha as Alpha crosses, right? So that's what we're about to do. Alpha's crossing. I think two of us probably All right, I'm Alpha, there. get in two, there. I'm three, covering. I'm, I'm getting last. Alpha, go. Alpha, go. I need a medic. So right here, right? We talk about distraction, right? Look at this guy, right? The order was to stay inside the compound, right? And I said it how many times, right? But people get distracted. They'll push fobs. They'll, they'll, they'll go for kills. They'll go for whatever. But right now, what I need is I need the only few guys, you know, you know, like three guys in my squad who survived, to stay in the buildings on the cap and hold the cap. Do so you guys wonder why I repeat myself so much? This is why I repeat myself so much. Get inside the buildings, Robo. What the fuck? Alpha, get in the buildings, the buildings, the buildings, not the top. I got top. a 30 mil up too. 30 mil up there too. Because people just don't listen, unfortunately. It's, it's, I wish they did, but they don't. Get in the buildings. I hear a vehicle. All right, so the everyone who's up is now in the compound. As you can see, the compound is right here. It's a very small compound. I know that we can hold it with, you know, three or four guys. There's only like three entrances. So as long as my guys are in there and holding tight corners, they can hold the cap. So... Right now, pretty much mission accomplished. As I sweep left here and I scan these hills, there's no enemy contact within, uh, you know, 100 meters. And I can make sure that so long as we hold the windows and doors in this compound, this is all open ground surrounding it, we can pretty much hold the cap. Especially because there's this huge MSR on the south side of the cap, which means that crossing this, especially when we're looking at it, is pretty much impossible. So... That's pretty much how we took the cap. Of course, big thanks to squad four and five for hitting the fob from the south. Uh, Force infantry did a great job distracting the Russian squad that was on that fob. And then five squad with the Bradley intercepting enemy BTRs and armor coming from Maine. It was a team effort, right? And you can see how as a squad, even down to the individual soldier, how all these decisions and actions that you make as an individual really affect the game, right? Because it all comes down to the team effort. Every single person and every single fire team, fire team leader, every squad leader, they all need to make the right decisions, communicate, and uh, control their squads in order to get things done efficiently. You can't lone wolf or play this game alone uh, without, uh, and have a great effect on the game. You need to make sure that you're communicating as much as possible to have the best experience. So I hope you guys learned something from this. Uh, the rest of this video is just me going around and medicing up the rest of the squad and getting the rest of the guys on cap, and then we all just sit in the point. So there's not really much I can talk about as far as that. One thing I will say is that when you do get on cap, this is a nice, like, uh, this is where you go from here. Um, the next step is when you get on cap, the number one thing is that you stay alive. So what that means is holding tight angles. And what I mean by that is you're engaging targets that are coming in within doorways within 10 meters. You're not looking for the 300 meter headshots, right? Because if they kill you at 300 meters, all, all they've done is taken one of our players off the cap. And all we've done is killed some random player 300 meters off the cap. And to take the cap, you need bodies. So that's a lose for us. We need to make sure that we're only engaging players on the cap and players that we have the advantage on, which would be players uh, pushing fatal funnels or, uh, you know, coming through doorways. So that's what we what I mean by hold tight angles or when I say strong point of point, strong point of point, uh, strong point of location, it means just lock down that building. That's all I care about. One building, one doorway, one window. That's it. Don't try to engage targets 300 meters out because you lose that fight. If you kill them, that's not as big of a hit as if they kill you because you're on the cap. You're capping this. I need bodies here. They can flood in from 300 meters all they want, but until they get in the door, they're irrelevant to me, right? So that's pretty much this uh, V12 breakdown. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. We got a lot more like it uh, coming up soon. I really do enjoy doing this because it helps me spread the uh, knowledge among the, the player base. And you guys maybe learn something. You guys find this entertaining and so on and so forth. But thanks so much, guys. I got a couple more V12 videos coming up. Remember, we have that new merch in the merch shelf down below. Uh, we're streaming on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, YouTube's on Monday and Wednesday. Twitch is on Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. We have that new which sub button as well. And then finally, Karma Cut 2x3 patches on Patreon.com as well as send it key tags. Thanks you so much for watching, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy. And we'll all see you in the next one.